At CBF, we know that for you to change your body, you need to change your mind. Exercise and eating healthy is only part of the plan. We care about our members as we care about our family because our members become our family. It is not about competition, but support. It is not about being the strongest or the fastest, but about you defeating your negative self. It is about working together and making the task challenging and have fun. By the end, what matters is not how hard the session was, but that you take control of your mind so you can take control of your body. My name is Sandro Torres, and I'm happy you are part of our family. Welcome to Custom Body Fitness. Welcome everybody with another interview here with your health coach, Sandro Torres. Today, we have a special guest, Kathleen Force. She is a fast emotional healer specialist, and I'm very excited to start asking some good questions. Kathleen, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. Good to have you here. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about you. You you created a good reputation, and I'm I'm very excited to to interview you because you helped me, and you probably remember. But we're gonna talk about a little bit ahead in the interview. I'm gonna tell you how you helped me, and I think you can help a lot of people. But before we talk about that and ask you the questions that people wanna know about, let's get to know you a little bit. Tell me. How do you end up doing what you're doing and how that has been helping you transform your life? Well, I, I started out and I, ha I experienced childhood trauma and I was very uh, insecure, felt unsafe, and I developed an eating disorder at age 16 that lasted 22 years. Wow, that was, so that was 38 years when you turned 38 that's correct and i it was uh it was very agonizing because um uh you know if you're a binge eating uh, a binge eater it's um it's very shameful and my weight fluctuated a lot so one time i would see somebody and i looked really great and then the next time they saw me i gained like 25 pounds and um you know i usually did my binge eating late at night and I was totally out of control. So it was very, very upsetting. I was totally inauthentic and um, superficial. And um, it was a very, very hard time. And I remember praying that, you know, God, dear God, if I could just get over this eating problem, I'd never ask for anything again. But um, anyway, so... How, how do you know, how, how do you find out that you had an eating disorder? Did you went and get diagnosed with the doctor? Did you just find out? Did you read about it? How that well, happened? No, no, I never went to the doctor, but I was just, I knew that I was out of control. You know, every, you knew there was no control in you eating. Well, it happened at night. You know, I might have a full day of activity and, you know, working and so on, but late at night, I would start, you know, when, when you're not moving around, when you're just being present and still, and anxiety, I would start to get anxious. And I discovered that if I would binge eat on cookies and ice cream and things, that numb my feelings out and anxiety went away. So, so you keep your mind busy with eating? Uh, late at night. It didn't happen every night. When you were busy? Uh, well, when I was busy during the day, I was occupied, but when my mind was still, then I would get, you know, the anxiety would come. And I discovered later on the anxiety was coming from not feeling safe, feeling anger. Because when I was three years old, I had a tantrum. I threw myself on the floor. My mother, you know, spanked me and rejected me and then shamed me and so on. And so uh, what I learned is that you know to get my needs met with my mother 
I had to be a nice little girl, I couldn't ask for anything, and I certainly couldn't show anger. So there was danger about feeling and expressing anger, and that's what caused my binge eating disorder. And in fact, I think that is um, one of the main reasons why people have addictions, because they don't feel safe feeling their emotions. So they stuff them down uh, or ignore them, suppress them. And those emotions, because they don't get processed, are buried alive. And they're active and they're buried alive. And so if you don't process your um, you know, your emotions, uh, it can cause lots of problems. So tell me a little bit, I have a daughter, and of course, my, my wife and I, we do our best to be the best parents, and we are aware of a lot of things, but not everything. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is the best thing? Of course, what I'm thinking about is let them express their emotion, but when, is, when, can, when can you say, when can, um, how can you help them express and do that? so they don't become a trauma. Okay, so if um, the, uh, is it a little girl? Yeah, yes. Yeah, a little girl, okay. So let's say she's, how old is she? I'm sorry. Two. Two, oh, she's two, she's very young. But if she wants to cry, you can hold her in your arms and rock her. And, you know, maybe she's sad or maybe, you know, who knows, but just comfort her and allow her to express herself. And it's a universal consciousness that most parents, you know, all over the world, when their child is crying, they try to get them to stop crying. And they say, don't cry, you're a big, you know, you're a big girl. And it happens especially with boys. You know, if boys are crying, they, the parents say, oh, you're a big boy. You know, if you fell down and you scraped your knee, big boys don't cry, you know. And so um, boys are conditioned more than girls not to feel and express their emotions. They're taught to, you know, stuff them down. You could ask them, you know, you can hold them and rock them, and you can say, uh, you know, if, she, if, you know under, if she understands, you know, like, what's wrong? And they could say, oh, I really wanted that, you know, I really wanted that toy. I didn't have that toy. And just... You know, you could say, well, I'd like to give you that toy, but, you know, you've got lots of other toys. And, you know, you're, you're going to be okay, but if you want to, you know, let them express themselves. And, you know, tr try not to put them in a box. I mean, she's still young, but usually when they get four and five, parents are saying, you know, do this and do that, and, and they're trying to put them in a box and not uh, really allowing them to be who they really are. So good. It's good to it's good to know that. Tell me, continue telling me about your trauma and. Okay. Well, because I was inauthentic, and um, you know, when I had this tantrum, I didn't really have. I didn't really feel safe asking for what I wanted because I asked for what I wanted and I got whipped. I got rejected. And when you're a three year old, if you feel rejected, it's almost like death. Okay. So I had. Uh, when I when I had that traumatic incident, I mean I can still remember it. I can't remember hardly anything else in my you know my really youthful young age, you know. But I definitely remember that trauma of you know the tantrum and everything and being rejected and spanked and and so on. But I made up all these beliefs that I can't have what I want. Uh, you know I have I have to do what other people want me to do to get my needs met to survive. Because at a three-year-old, everything's about surviving and getting your needs met, you know, being held, fed, you know, and so on. So what happens is we have this trauma, and I never got any, you know, help or anything. So as you grow up and you're an adult, you still have those beliefs. Yes, and they, I And a lot of times agree. they're unconscious, but you still have them, and you're still being operated by those sabotaging beliefs. So what I mean by this is you asked me how my life continued. Well, I didn't have boundaries. If you don't have boundaries, you can't really have a healthy relationship, you know, because you don't ask for what you want and you can't say no when it's, things aren't working for you and so on. So you don't have, so I had um, all these series of romantic relationships. 
that lasted about two years, and then they would dump me. And I would get this incredible pain Rejection. in my gut that I didn't know it at the time. It wasn't about the men. It was about my abandonment as a three-year-old. And I would get this huge uh, pain in my gut. And I would be very emotionally upset. And a lot of times I would cry when they would break up with me. And it would be very upsetting for, you know, weeks and sometimes months. And so, and then when I had different jobs, if you don't have boundaries and if you can't ask for what you want and you can't express yourself in a conscious manner, people take advantage of you. So there was a lot of emotional pain in romance and careers and, and you know, on top of being inauthentic, you know, that, I was a mess. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's, do you one day sit and contemplate everything in your life, or what happened that make you that make you make you think about all those things that you were doing wrong, and how with that how you come up with the conclusion that your anxiety came from that, and you needed oh, to oh. and besides the the anxiety, then you overeat and you needed to fix that. Okay, so um, one of my um, instances with a romantic relationship as I was around 32 or something and uh, the person who I was living with um, started having an affair with my best friend and that was very painful but anyway so I went to a therapist and it didn't really help me much it helps when somebody listens to you so you can sort of you know express yourself but I didn't really get that much information then uh, when I moved, to, I was uh, living in I was living in Aspen in the early '80s, and then I moved to Santa Barbara. But when I got there, a friend of mine said, "Hey, I'm going to take this class on expressing yourself. Do you want to go with me?" And I said, "Sure, I'll go with you." So um, we were in the class, and the instructor was telling us about how we were going to express our emotions, and we had this big rubber bataka and we had these giant pillows and so she said when you're angry i want you to take these batakas and pound on the pillows and when you cry i want you to stand and shake you know when you're sad and so on so it was like the third session out of like 12 sessions and the instructor got to the twosome i i had a partner and she said how how come you're not hitting the you know the pillows and i said you know, with a big phony smile. I'm not, I'm not angry. I can, I'm not angry, you know, like that. And she said, well, just start, you know, start hitting it. And I said, no, no. She said, start hitting it. So I started hitting it and I was going like this. And then pretty soon I got into it. And, you know, after about eight minutes, I was sweating and the rage came up that I had never felt before. And I was like hitting this hello like I wanted to kill somebody and I mean really that was the first time that I had expressed my anger wow that's I, impressive I took that class three times and at the end of the three times that was like a year and two months I had lost my 25 pounds and I no longer had a binge eating disorder chose for expressing you anger by hitting a pillow. That's all That's, you needed to well, do. Well, of course, she was, uh, the instructor was giving me guidance and so on, and I had guidance. I didn't do it all on my own. Plus, my partner, which I called him my lovey partner, we would get together once in between the classes and we would practice. But no, that, that, was, that was it. Wow. Is it, by only expressing, that's well, it. Well, I didn't feel safe feeling anger. I didn't feel safe. And once I felt safe and I could get it, it like it lifted a whole big, huge ah, weight off of my, got it. you know. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm without words. I mean, my, well, my brain is processing everything, okay. but it's, it's... Well, here's that's why I think people have alcohol and drug problems, because they weren't able to 
be who they are and express themselves because parents thought they were doing a good job by saying, no, you can't do that and getting spanked if you did this or that. I mean, and, and, and children want the need their um, parents' so attention here, to survive. So here, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. Our daughter, as a reference to see if I'm doing something wrong, <laughs> our daughter, we let her do a lot of things. Yes. And she's very expressive. And I'm thinking about, I mean, I, th I, I like I said, I want to make the least mistakes I can. Yes. But one of the things that we try to teach her is to be organized when she's finished. So she noticed she is very messy, um, purposely. She knows. Like the other day, she came and got all her toys, and she, st and she messed up everything on purpose. And then she started laughing and, 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 and screaming and showing us, there is a big mess. There is a big mess. I, and, wonder, I wonder if she gets more attention by making a mess. I don't know. Probably, but we give her a lot of attention. Yeah. It's not that we ignore her. Yeah, I mean, yeah. my, my wife yeah. and I, we yeah, give yeah. her a yeah. lot of attention. Yeah. Sometimes we get busy and we can't give her that yeah, attention. Okay. And we try to teach her that sometimes it's okay mm -hmm. not to have that attention. It's That's not right. that she doesn't have attention. Yeah. Probably you're right. She wants that attention. That's why she's asking that. And we let her do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, don't, we don't say yeah. don't do it. We let her do it. But when it comes the time, we teach her. Now yeah. it's time to clean up and put everything away. And she doesn't want to do it. So we find a way to persuade her to do it. Okay. For example, she doesn't watch um, TV or anything yeah. like that uh, mm -hmm. often. But mm -hmm. she has a cartoon that she loves to, to watch. Mm -hmm. So I let her know, unless you pick up everything, you're not going to watch your, your cartoon. I was going to say that. And sometimes maybe you can help her. Yeah, that's what my do wife it. does. Yes, but to make it like she has choice. So if she wants to do something else, you always clean up after your mess or after you use something or play with something. So that's something good. Yeah. That we no, let her express good. and let her that's and good. then teach her yeah. too. Yeah. Okay. When I say um, express yourself, that does not mean you don't have boundaries with them. You still have boundaries with them, but you don't punish you know you don't punish them and try to fit them in to a you know a certain way perfect thank you uh because i'm um, i try to balance everything yes and like i said i'm not perfect yes. and i can always take yes. a lot of yes. advice to do everything i yes. can yes. to be a, a good father a good father and and raise yes. a a great leader yes. Yes. Uh, thank you now you say you lost 25 pounds and then you keep that off. It improved my self-esteem because I, you know, wasn't beating myself up for, you know, binge eating at night. And when that happened and I saw the progress that I made, I made a commitment to myself that I would um, work on my emotional healing and that that would be my main goal in life. And that's what I did. I took tens of dozens of classes at the adult ed. I took, I took many, many classes. I worked with over 30 healers, coaches, and therapists. I learned uh, several healing modalities. I mean, I, I was a, com, you know, compulsive class taker. And, you know, I, you know, I hadn't figured out the romance thing yet and, and other things about boundaries and so on, but I was committed to improving myself. I mean, that's all I cared about, really. Yeah, I, I was in that point in one time in my life. Yeah. Uh, but, but let's continue with you. So let's, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about, about eating disorder, uh, weight gain, and, and emotional, okay. um, emotional health. So I'm going to tell you a story about a couple of clients. Uh, and this is not, of course, they're not the only one. I bet there is many. And I, I mean, many of our members come and tell me the stories and, and I try to relay, of course, I don't have the same pain they went through. I have my own traumas, traumas. And because of my own trauma, I can relate and try mm -hmm. everything I can to fit in their mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. But I know their the struggles are mm -hmm. a little different than mine. Sure. I had a client who 
she was sexually abused when she was six and then when she was 10. Mm -hmm. She was sexually abused twice. Mm -hmm. And she's not uh, been cheating. Mm -hmm. She's doing the opposite. Uh, she's keeping a very low weight because when she eats, she has she has the sense of vomiting. Yes. And when when she start when we, the the way we start the conversation is I was we were talking and and when we talking about the things mm -hmm. that she eat and so on, she said, well, sometimes I eat and then. Um, I feel that sense of vomiting, and that's when I made my conclusion. She has some transmuts that she needs to work on, yeah. and then I start asking those questions. And finally, she told me that she was abused sexually mm -hmm. when she was six and ten. Um, uh, like I told her, the best thing you can do is find somebody very um, professional that can help you in that area. What I can do is recommend a couple of books and listen to you and tell you what I have gone through. And then what my, the tools that I have used, maybe they can help you. But there is a lot more people out there that can help you. I had another client that she was raped by her um, grandpa. Mm -hmm. And she very, also... Very, very common, by the way. About 25% of the women have sexual abuse. And most of those are from a relative, a neighbor... Uh, a, a parent or what well, I mean it's people that they know it's not people that don't know yeah I mean that's most of the cases and she told me that that she lived with a lot of anger and yeah. she didn't notice that she lived with a lot of anger against her grandpa father um, but then as we continue the conversation and so on she came I mean they we do a lot of assessments we go through a lot of things she she told me that uh, in one point she knew that her grandfather also was raped by somebody else. Of course. And that's the trauma that he was passing it to the granddaughter. Yes. And she decided to forgive. Mm -hmm. And that's when she let free everything. Very good. Um, so what can you tell us about those people who are afraid to talk about this? Or they already talk about that, but they haven't found somebody who can really help them overcome those emotional traumas like yours. Sometimes I read a book, by the way, just let me add this. Uh, the book is about a person. She was suffering from bulimia first and then anorexia. But the trauma that she went through is that she saw her dad running up, uh, running over with a car, a guy, and then beaten up with a bat until he killed the guy. And the daughter um, mm -hmm. watch everything, and that mm -hmm. was—I mean, you can imagine. Yeah, that, that was be, enough. That would be extremely traumatic. Yeah, for her to mm -hmm. to be in that, and yeah. she didn't she didn't know what she was destroying herself mm -hmm. until she knew where the trauma was coming from. Yeah. Just like you, um, what people can do to start healing and overcoming these demons and these uh, destructive behaviors. Well. I'll just speak from my, my own experience. I mean, I, I literally spent 40 years working with dozens of people, going to tens of dozens of classes, learning this and that. And if people want a shortcut, first they could read my book, um, you know, Introducing the Holistic Emotional Makeover. I, I want to mention this because it's, it's critical what we're talking about, is that I developed a system that is extremely fast. And it's all based on clearing out childhood trauma quickly and easily in a very short period of time. And I've worked with many clients who, uh, when during the consultation, um, we list 10 goals that they want. And, and one of them was bulimic, and she never even put that on her, her list. Um, but after doing some investigation and so on, I found out she was bulimic. But after we cleared her childhood trauma, she just stopped doing it. I didn't even address it because we cleared out other traumas, you know, where she almost got killed, you know, like the same situation. Her mother tried to run over her dad in the car and she was in between the car. And the, I mean, you know, a lot of things like that. And, you know, the person who's bulimic probably, um, you know, when you're before eight or 10 years old, anything that happens in the family that's upsetting or whatever, they think it's their fault because they have not actually 
um, di divided themselves. I mean, they don't have um, uh, an identity of being separate. So if their parents get a divorce, if they argue, if there's you know any kind of trauma, they think it's their fault. So a little kid will think, gee, if I was good enough, this wouldn't have happened. If I was worthy enough, this wouldn't have happened. And blah, blah, blah. They blame themselves they blame for themselves. everything. And that's why they have these, you know, being bulimic or something else. Now, one of the things that's really powerful about my work, I mean, there's several things, there's lots of things, but number one is I do muscle testing. And when somebody comes, I've had VIP sessions with people and, you know, that are like an hour and a half or two. And they said, well, I've got this emotional eating problem, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I muscle test. It's safe for me to be attractive. No, it's safe for me. You know, it's not safe for me to be attractive because they have sexual abuse. Or, you know, it's safe for me to weigh my optimal weight. No, if I get that, if, I, if, if, you're, if you're not feeling safe weighing your optimal weight, there's a reason. So then I dig down and I find out why. And when I clear that, I clear that with all of the healing modalities that I've learned, that I can instantly clear a sabotaging belief once we get down to the core. And when they get down to the core, it's like, wow, I, I don't feel like I have to eat. And it's okay. I feel safe now wearing, weighing my optimal weight. Uh, let's talk about this now. I don't know if you remember, uh, one day, you and I, we met. Yeah. Uh, of I course, you remember I, when we I met. I remember. Um, and we had an interview about 5G. But I remember that you said, what is missing in your life? And I told you, anything, nothing. I'm, I'm very happy. I mean, everything is, is going amazing and great. And you said, uh, are, you, are, you, are you sure? And I said, yes. And then I thought about it and I say, actually, there is one thing. Um, I'm trying to to have a successful relationship. I remember and, that. And I date these uh, a couple of women, and 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 my my not. I I I'm doing my best to keep that relationship um, healthy and to make it work, but it seems like it's not happening. And then you say, "Well, I'm gonna give you a session," and then the session was over the phone. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, I remember. Uh, and I remember, I tell you part of my life, you ask the questions, and then I tell you part of my life, and you finally concluded. You try to save your mom. You're, you're, you're finding troubles a woman because you see your mom there, and what you try to do is save your mom. When you said that, it was like, it cleared up my mind. It was like, that's true. I mean, I feel attracted to women who have Trouble. They need to be saved. <laughs> they need to be they saved. Need, they, need, they want and they need to be saved. They, and so you're right there. Yeah. And, and then it backfires on you. Yeah, yeah. Because they're maybe not so healthy. Yeah, 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 because I was looking for a destructive yeah. a destructive um, relationship. I read in a book. So there is this guy. Um, his book is about uh, being financially free and successful. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about how... The things that you do in the past do affect you in the future. Mm -hmm. And how all the negative things that you have done, that you owe to life, it's going to happen in one point in the future. Mm -hmm. And the more you owe, the more you're going to pay for that. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, he was giving an advice to a woman that this woman wanted to run away with a boyfriend. The woman, this woman was... Um, was a good woman. She didn't have many things that she will owe to life. Mm -hmm. He was, let's call it her clean. She was um, doing the right things. Um, of course, nobody's perfect, but let's call her like that. And then the boyfriend was the opposite. He was in gangs. He will mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, steal, lie, and things There's like that. There's always a reason. Yeah, and he told the woman say, if you run with this, if you go away with this guy and mm -hmm. you try and you're going to do you, 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 you trying to change him and try to help him, even though he wants to, his black shadow is going to cover you because mm -hmm. he owns a lot of he owes a lot of things to life mm -hmm. and you're going to get involved mm -hmm. into that. Doesn't matter how good you are, you're mm -hmm. going to get involved mm -hmm. into that. I thought about that.
But, I, but, that, the, but the thing of it is, some people have the belief that they need to save someone or that they can save one, somebody. Or, you know, like if you have a need for something, you can't not control your behavior. So that's the distinction between need and want. You know, like um, I might, if people have a need to acknowledgement, they just go running around, you know, bragging and, you know, doing all sorts of behavior. But let's get back to you, though. Let's let's get back to you. When you realize that, and we did some clearing, is that right? That you don't need to save anybody and that you can find somebody who is emotionally healthy, then that's what happens. Yes, I think, I personally think, and I could be wrong, you please uh, add to this. I think when I discover something in my life, there is a need all the time, but I'm aware of that now. Mm -hmm. So now I have a choice. Mm -hmm. Instead of just going for that need, mm -hmm. then I can say, no, that's a choice. You, you, your, your, your body, your carnal, your pleasures want that, mm -hmm. but the spirit doesn't want that. Mm -hmm. What you prefer to do? Mm -hmm. Now I have a choice. There is consequences for making this decision. Mm -hmm. For example, like uh, when we had this uh, conversation, this mm -hmm. clearing, um, this therapy that you helped me with. Clear in that moment when you clear my brain, it was like now I have a choice. Mm -hmm. Now. I so can we, get... we actually probably cleared the need to save. We probably cleared that. I'm getting a yes right now. So we did do some energetic healing there, and now you're aware of it, but we did clear it that you needed to save somebody and that you don't you can that you deserve and we're, I think we did once I do a clearing, I do a download, you know, that you have creator's definition, perspective, understanding truth of being safe, secure, whole, and complete, being conscious and aware of your thoughts, and that you're worthy and deserving of someone that doesn't need to be saved. I completely remember that. So, so you think that people need to find that problem they had and also clear that problem as well? Well, in my process, I identify and clear sabotaging beliefs that were created from the trauma and then I download the positive and then people just feel different and different and they act differently. Their, their thinking is different because your belief programming is what causes your thinking, your thought, your actions and your results. So people can have sabotaging beliefs around relationships, money, you know, about having healthy boundaries and so on. Just, you know, and so that's my specialty is identifying and clearing sabotaging so beliefs. So, so a lot of times when I'm listening to coaches and therapists, they're always talking about managing this and managing stress and managing leadership styles. And you know that takes a lot of effort and a lot of times it doesn't work. So as a, what I pride myself in is getting rid of the root sabotaging beliefs that are causing the thinking and the actions and so on. So you don't have to manage it. Like, you know, I have weighed 114 pounds now for, you know, 30 or 40 years. And, um, you know, it's not a lot of effort. It just happens naturally. It's sort of like my set point, you know, the set point. That's what I muscle test too, is and find out what their set point is. Some people's set point is like 20 or 30 pounds more than they actually weigh. And there's a lot of things about weight from their upbringing, and there can be just a lot of things. So I muscle check, is it this? No, is it this? No, is this? No. Oh, it's this. Okay, let's go down that road. Okay, and everything that you're talking about is on the book? Well, the book talks about all my suffering and how all the classes I took, and then how I have developed this unique, it's very unique, it's not like anything else, that I've seen, there might be some other people out there doing it, but I haven't heard of them or read about it, but I have a unique system that's unlike anything else that's highly effective. 10, during the consultation, we list 10 goals that the person wants, and if they wanna move ahead with it, most all of them get their 10 goals in the 12 session. Wow, how fun. I mean, I can't even believe all the results sometimes that people have. I mean, really, it's amazing. 
Nice. Okay. Um, that's impressive. That's very good. Uh, where, where can we buy the book? Where can we find you it? You can go to my website, Kathleen Fors, F O R S dot com. You can get a digital box, a digital book there, or you can go to Amazon and find it on Amazon in a, a paperback. Okay, okay, perfect. What else we can find you? Find you any um, social media? Um, it's just look up my name, I guess, on LinkedIn and so on. It's just Kathleen Fors. Yeah. Are you active in those places? I I haven't been that active. By the way, I just want to share with you my program allows people to really um, get self empowered in their relationships, in their career. Uh, you know, and, and in their self-empowered in themselves. And, you know, I'm sure that there are some of your clients that maybe can't work out sometimes because somebody asks them to do something and they don't feel comfortable and saying, no, I'm going to work out. This, is, this program is all about being self-empowered in the emotional and mental health, which affects every area of their life. Perfect. Thank you, Kathleen. I really yeah. appreciate okay. it. Uh, Anything else besides that that you want to tell? Okay, I do want to say one thing. Um, do I have two minutes? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So the bottom line is to improve your emotional health. And one of the and, and when you improve your emotional health, everything else in your life is going to go way up. It's going to really improve. Okay, next thing is the foundation for emotional mental health is that you are able to feel your emotions and know how to process them. And I have a mini course on my website. And if you want, if anybody listening to this program today wants to have it at no cost, they can put in the promo code FEEL, all capitalized, F-E-E-L, and then the number two, and then HEAL in capital letters, H-E-A-L. And they can go through the course at no charge. Thank you. Thank you for the promo code. Everybody, you hear that? So go to KathleenForce.com and put the code for the... For the for, uh, it's called uh, Feel to Heal. Feel to Heal. Processing Unwanted Emotions for Self-Empowerment. That's the name of the course. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, please go to um, Amazon, get the book. Um, I really, really recommend it. Uh, Kathleen, you helped me a lot. Um, I've been married now for almost four years. And um, I'm very happy, happily married. I mean, I'm not married because uh, I have a married and I have to stay together. I'm happily married. And every year it gets better. And Kathleen did help me to actually be a little bit more stable and find what I was looking for. So thank you so much, everybody, for continuing with us. Please share this with whoever needs to heal emotionally. And there is all of us out there. We all have some kind of trauma. I believe there is people who are rehabbing and people who don't know they need to rehab. So I hope you are in that line where you know that you need help too overcome those traumas that you have in life and ready to change your life and be on the other side where you can be happily and achieving your goals. Um, thank you, Kathleen. Thank I really you. appreciate you with us. Thank you. I, and, I appreciate you sharing your story. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay. everybody. Bye now. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoyed the content offered here, then I know you will enjoy these books. These are great tools to lead you to successful weight loss, better health, and greater happiness.